Praise the Lord. Greetings to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is a good God. He's an amazing Father. It just makes me so happy when I think about the Lord and how much He loves me and, you know, just being in the presence of our Father. There's nowhere else I'd rather be than just live in God's presence. I know a lot of you think that, you know, it's so hard to be in God's presence. God is a really mean God and, you know, what if all the sins that I have done. But these are all the thoughts that enemy puts in our head to keep us away from God's presence. God is loving, He's caring, He's compassionate. When you read the Word of God, we see that over and over again, how He came and He came for that one that was lost, which was me, which was you. Amen. Hallelujah. How amazing is that love? How can we ever think that God is a mean God or He's not loving? You know, things happen in our lives, but we have no answers for a lot of things. We, 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 we see a lot of things in history that's happening right now. Sometimes I even wonder if God's um, second coming is so soon that, you know, it's unfolding right in front of our eyes. So we don't have a lot of time. It's, it's time to get strong in the Lord. It's time to spend time in the presence of God. It's time to really talk to others about Jesus and let them know that Jesus loves them and stay away from hell when we die or if Jesus comes, you know, really soon. We don't want to go to hell. We don't want Satan to take authority of our life or our spirit. So it's time that we repent, leave our sinful ways, come back to Jesus because He loves us. And I'm telling this from experience. There was a time in my life where I thought God didn't love me. I thought that I'm going to be depressed for the rest of my life, but Jesus came into my heart. And it took many years for me to really understand how much God truly loved me. It's like, I'm a mom and you know, when you have children, you love them unconditionally. Even though they do things that are, you know, like upsetting and disappointing, you still love them unconditionally. If we do that for our children in this world, imagine how much Jesus loves us, our heavenly father that created us and sent us to this earth with a purpose. How much he loves each and every one of us because each and every one of us are so unique for him. Each and every one of his children are so um, different and, and he has a purpose for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk about, is it worth worrying? We worry about so many things. You know, I come across other ladies and other families that worry about so many things. There's so many things that, that bother them or concern them. They're happy in the side, but there are a few things that bother them. And they tell me, you know, sister, please pray for me. Please, please pray for my children or please pray for my daughter or my son. And we all live in this world. This is a fallen world. It belongs to Satan. But we are children of God. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, if you have accepted, you know, follow the commandment of God, which is take water baptism, and you're filled in the power of the Holy Spirit, you have authority. You can walk in God, you know, walk with, with God. Amen. You can walk in victory. We don't have to walk in disappointment. We don't have to walk in failure every day. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a scripture portion, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 30. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has its own trouble. So here Jesus is looking at some people, and he feels it in his spirit. When you pray for somebody, you feel the sadness. You feel what they're going through. Amen. Because... That's, that's the spirit of God. You're, you're, you feel the burden of your brothers or your sisters when you intercede for them. 
Now this is the same thing when Jesus is talking to these people, you know, he's, he's probably doing a sermon on the mount and he feels that there are so many of them that are worried and they're just, you know, anxious or worried or depressed or going through a lot in their life. But Jesus is thinking, this is not the kind of life I want you to live. I want you to live a life of victory. I want you to live a life of joy and peace and love. But he feels that these people are worried. So he, you know, compares them to the birds of the air, the lilies, the flowers of the field that grow, the grass that, you know, grow in the field. Nobody feeds them. A lot of them grow by itself. You know, God gives them rain at the right time. God gives the birds of the air food at the right time. So when you look at all these things, how does God take care of all these things? But yet us people that know the Lord, we, we go to church, we pray, we worship the Lord. And, you know, we know a lot of the scriptures, but yet we worry. Why do we worry? The Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. You know, we have to learn to give our burdens to the Lord. And once you give your burden to the Lord, we feel like, oh, it's too much, too heavy for God to carry it. So I'm going to take it back. And then we carry it again. There is a point where you have to understand that when God says, do not be anxious, that means just give it to Him. It could be your children. It could be your spouse. It could be a financial matter, whatever your, it could be a disease, whatever that you're worried about today. I want you to learn and understand that if you can pray about it, ask God to take over and just Lord, be the Lord of my life and take over this burden that I'm carrying and then don't take it back, hallelujah. Now, I just wanna go over worry. Like what can worry do to us? Does it do any good? I don't, I have nothing to say that worry does any good for us. There's no positive things that I could come up with, but these are some of the things. Now, when you worry, you're going to get stressed out. Your blood pressure is going to get high and then you can have a stroke. It damages your health. It consumes your thought process. Sometimes our mind, we're just thinking, we wake up in the morning and a lot of us are just thinking so much to the point where our mind does not get a break. Remember, this is a battlefield. Satan, when you wake up in the morning or any time of the day, Satan works here in your mind. So we don't want the mind to be consumed with thoughts. You know, sometimes we don't get a break. We cannot even think for ourselves because there is a point where Satan just keeps throwing darts in your mind. He just keeps throwing thoughts in your head and keeps you worried, keeps you occupied. So we need to learn to break away from that. And how do we break away from that? Another thing, it disrupts your productivity. You are, you know, you're going to work and you can't even do anything for yourself because you're so worried about a certain thing. And it disrupts your productivity. You could be doing a lot. You might be a goal-oriented person. You could be a type of personality where you have to go get some things done, but Satan won't allow you to. He keeps throwing thoughts in your head and he keeps worrying you and making you anxious. And this way you don't get things done or God cannot use you in a certain way that God wants you to negatively affect the way you treat others remember it transfer from us to other people so if we are negative and if you're thinking um you know all the time we're always worried about something we cannot even smile a lot of people can't even smile you know a lot of people are so worried when you look at their faces you can tell they're trying to force a smile but God says, be happy, you know, God is a God of love. He's a God of, of, you know, laughter and wonderful, like, happiness. He does not want us to sit worrying and, and just depressed all the time. So when we come in depressed and sad and angry, we cannot treat our spouses right. We're going to be angry at our spouses. We're going to be angry at our parents or our children. So we're going to negatively affect other people. It transfers to them as well. It reduces your ability to trust in God because you're not, you are worrying so much because you feel like God is not gonna do anything about it. You feel like, I don't need to trust God because God, nothing's gonna happen. I'm not gonna get that miracle. You know, things are not gonna change. It's gonna be the same. So these are all the effects that worry has. When life gets tough and things come against you, you have an advantage. You're not on your own. Remember, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now praying for you so your faith will not fail. It's great to have people praying for you, friends standing in faith for you. But when you have the risen Savior praying for you, you cannot be defeated. 
you're not on your own. Amen. I, I always talk about watching documentaries. When I watch these um, documentaries about wildlife, you see how lions and cubs, lion cubs are playing. You know, lion cubs are weak. They're, they're little, they're fragile. They could easily get run over by a stampede of deer or whatever they're chasing. But these lion cubs are so, they feel like they're powerful because they have a mom and a dad that is really powerful and they're the kings of the jungle. So just like that, we belong to Jesus, the lion and the lamb, the lion of Judah. Amen, hallelujah. So if you have the lion of Judah on your side, just remember that you are not on your own. You might be facing a certain difficulty right now, but remember that if you can trust in Jesus, you are not on your own. Whatever circumstance that you are facing, you feel like the doors are closed, there's nothing, there's always a door open to heaven. Heaven will respond to your call. All you have to do is just surrender to Jesus. Walk away from sin. Walk away from your sinful life. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in reading the word of God. Hallelujah. The same God that created life in you can be trusted with the details of your life. You can trust in Jesus. We don't trust in men. You, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's 100% good to trust in somebody else, you know, in, in a man or, or a person that you confide in. They will listen to you for a certain time. They will pray for you for a certain time. But after that, they move on with their life. But you can always trust in Jesus because he created you. He is your creator and he loves you dearly. Hallelujah. Worrying about the future hampers your efforts for today. We, heard it. we have to learn to live in the moment. Learn to live the life that God has given you today. Don't waste your time just worrying about things. You know, get out, go, go, go do some stuff for yourself. You know, enjoy your life. You know, walk with Jesus. Walk in victory. God wants us to walk in victory and not in defeat. Hallelujah. Now worry, it also shows a lack of faith in God. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 32. The word says, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and yet your heavenly father knows that you need them. God knows exactly what you need in your life. We have, you know, we have so many plans for our life and a lot of times it doesn't come to pass. Or a lot of times we think it, it was successful, but if you made plans without Jesus or without God in your life, every time, even before I go out somewhere, I ask the Lord, like, Lord, do you want me to do this? God, is this what you want us to do? Me and my husband will sit together and pray before we make an important decision and we'll agree together in prayer and we'll talk about it. And if we have peace about it, then we'll move forward. Nothing pressures us, nothing, you know, other than God, nothing else gives us pressure. Our friends don't pressure us people tell us so many ideas and so many suggestions we take suggestions we take that into consideration but unless and until I hear from God I do not make a move and same thing with my husband he will wait we wait till we hear from God we wait till we have peace if you have restlessness you're making a decision and you're just like worried about it like I need something now just remember that's not from God because God is a God of peace he never makes you anxious God will never tell you to take a decision that is uh, that will make you hurt or that will that you know that won't have peace in it. So always remember that. Learn to trust in God. Have faith. We're such an instant society, especially in the U.S. Like we have instant coffee, we have instant drive-throughs where you can get instant hot food, like in minutes. So we get used to just getting instant responses. We can't wait. If we have to wait a few minutes, if the food is not ready yet, we get impatient. You cannot change God's kingdom. God's kingdom is peaceful. God's kingdom is patience. Amen. God's kingdom is love and joy. So you cannot take your life and, and try to tra transfer it to a godly kingdom. You can. God says, wait on me. God says, trust in me. God says, rest in the Lord. God says to delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So it's time that we learn God's way of doing things, amen. God wants you to rest. There's no hurry in heaven. He's not trying to rush you to do something. God says, just wait, just rest in me. Sometimes we have to learn to be patient. God is trying to teach you something, hallelujah. When you go through some troubles, know that God is right there with you. He's got your hand, amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. That's Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. He says, trust in me. Trust in the Lord with, can you just trust God? 
Hallelujah. Just remember, just imagine, uh, I'm going to give you an imaginary scene, okay? Um, you're, you're about to fall off a cliff and you got somebody's hand and you're holding on. This is your last rope that you have. Hallelujah. And you're holding on to this person's hand, hoping that they won't let go and you will fall all the way down. So this is how God, when you go through troubles and trials, you have to learn to trust in Him, walk with Him, walk with Jesus, and He will make things come to pass. Hallelujah. He is our helper in Psalms 33 verse 20. It says, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. He gives us peace. Isaiah 26 verse 3. The Bible says you keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on you because he trusted you. If you trust in Jesus and only God alone, if you trust in, in you know, the omniscient presence of the Holy Spirit, God will give you peace in your situation. Hallelujah. And it's perfect peace. It's not just a peace that you get when you get something. This is peace that is perfect. Hallelujah. Now you were called blessed when you trust in the Lord. In Jeremiah 17 verse 7, blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Hallelujah. You are blessed if you can trust in the Lord. Blessing doesn't mean prosperity and a lot of money and a big house and you know expensive things. That's not what blessing is. I think a lot of us are under the impression that blessing means prosperity. Blessing is peace in your life. Blessing is joy in your life. Hallelujah. If you cannot sleep in the night, you're tossing and turning in bed. Let me tell you, trust in Jesus. Your riches or luxuries of this world is very temporary. Hallelujah. It's not going to last long. David Wilkerson said, how quickly we forget God's great deliverances in our lives. How easily we take for granted the miracles He has performed in our past. How easily we take for granted the miracles He has performed in our past. Hasn't God came for you earlier? Hasn't God come for you in the past? He has done great and mighty miracles when everybody let go of you and you're on your own, you're singled out, you're isolated, you called on the name of the Lord and hasn't He came for you before? Never forget to say thanks for everything God has done in our lives. Hallelujah. When you go through something right now, I want you to know no matter if you have haven't gotten anything out of this message today. I just want you to know, trust in the Lord. In your situation, you are a child of God. You have to walk in victory and in power and in the authority that God has given you. Hallelujah. You have the authority to call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heaven will respond and make a way for you. Hallelujah. Sorrow does not last a lifetime. This is a season in your life where God is trying to teach you something or trying to teach you to trust Him. Hallelujah. He has you in the palm of His hands. He already has a solution and breakthrough is headed your way. All you have to do is just believe in Him. Hallelujah. Don't be sad and anxious and worried about your life and things that go on in your life. Learn to spend more time trusting in the Lord. Just wait on a miracle. God will come through for you. He will never leave you alone. He is a God of compassion. He never let any of the people go hungry. When you read in the Bible, everybody that came to, you know, like hear the sermons and when they were about to leave, there were women, there were children, there were men, and they, they, they walked many, many miles to come hear Jesus. And Jesus said, he didn't want them to go hungry. So he always provided them food. This is the same God that you, you're serving. Hallelujah. If you can just trust in him, let me assure you that God will come through for you. Hallelujah. I want to... A special prayer request that's been in my heart. Pray for Afghanistan. Pray for China. Pray for a um, lot of our sisters and our brothers that are being persecuted right now. Hallelujah. Because they believe in Jesus Christ. I pray that God will come through for them. I pray that God will hide them. I pray that God's presence will be with them. Hallelujah. Pray earnestly for these nations that are, that are going through persecution. Our young brothers and young sisters, their wives, their children, they're going through so much persecution. It breaks my heart to just read about Afghanistan. So pray for Afghanistan. Pray for these nations. You might be in a comfort on. You might be in a comfort zone and in a luxury place somewhere. You don't have to worry about these things, but thank God for these things that you have. But don't forget to intercede and pray for your brothers and sisters all over the world. As a Christian, you're called to do that. You have to take some time, maybe in the middle of the night when you wake up, you know, don't just toss and turn in bed and try to waste time to spend some time uh, interceding for these people. Hallelujah that God's mighty protection will be with them. Hallelujah, I wanna say a little prayer for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I just come into the throne of grace, Abba. You're a good God, Father. You're amazing, God. You, you're our savior, our healer, our restorer, our deliverer, hallelujah. God, you're our brother, you're our lover, you're our everything, you're our best friend, God, hallelujah. Jesus, we love you with all our hearts, Lord. I pray for the one that is watching me right now, Father. As they're watching me, Lord, I pray that your presence will just penetrate into their room, Father God, and just hallelujah, heal them of their diseases in the name of Jesus. Father, I come against every attack of the enemy on their lives, Father God. I come against depression right now in the name of Jesus. Every dark cloud of depression, leave right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you're a good God. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for some breakthroughs, Father God. People that are still suffering and struggling with COVID, God, I pray that your hands will just reach out and touch their lungs, Father God. Touch their breathing, Father God. Touch every organ in their body. Some people that are struggling with, hallelujah, insomnia, they can't sleep at night. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Some people that are suffering with fibromyalgia, you've got pain in your joints, in your body, I just can't it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for the mighty power of pre and presence of God will just flow through your body right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, some people that are having some financial difficulties, Lord, I pray that you send a breakthrough for them, Father God. At the right time, Lord, send them the right connections, the right jobs, open doors for them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I bless some businesses in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you're a good God. I pray for for some kids. I pray for Afghanistan, Lord. I pray for the women, the children, and the men that are suffering over there and struggling over there, God. I pray for a breakthrough, Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray for a special angelic protection over our brothers and sisters over there, God. I pray that your angels be over them and hide them and protect them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Send a breakthrough over there, God, over that nation, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Fight their battles, God fight their battles, God. God, I love you so much, Lord. I give you all the glory and all the honor, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May God bless you with these words. I want to thank you for watching me again. Uh, please, you know, send us your prayer request to run to win ministries. We love you and God loves you. Jesus loves you. He's God. He will come through for you. Amen. Adhunika Sangeetiya Vidyagaludayim Migacha Sangeetiya Pravartagaludayim Pinbalatil Christian Live, India Eleven Ninum, Live Telecasting in a RM Bangur Chirikino. For more details, contact nine eight four six double five double two two zero.